Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk reached out a hand and took up what appeared to be a replica of an Aladdin's lamp. He rubbed it suddenly. Interesting. Open sesame. Look. Steed looked. Appearing through the misty haze caused by the slight explosion, appeared a scantily dressed, very attractive young woman. She walked towards Steed and said, You want something? <laughs> well, I... Uh... Uh, how do you like my little genie? Genie? The service with a smile, eh? We live up to our name. QQF. Quite, quite fantastic. We live out everyone's fantasies for them, and so relieve the emotional tensions. Tell me, are there any fantasies we can do for you? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. I've tried it. And it works beautifully. I've tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel experience even more trouble with various people who are intent on playing the fantasy game. John Steed and Emma Peel, investigating the deaths of two top undercover agents, had worked upon two clues. One was given to Steed when a gentleman who called himself Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk phoned George Reed's rooms. Steed had been searching them and had answered the phone, pretending to be George. Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk said he was from an organization known as QQF, and Steed made an appointment as George Reed to call upon him. Steed had left Mrs. Peel to follow up on another clue, which was a jar of honey. Mrs. Peel had called it Bee Bumbles, the makers of the honey, and had a most interesting talk to Mr. Bumble himself. While she was in his shop, Vincent and Bernie, Mr. Arcady's henchman, had arrived. Vincent stayed in the shop, but sent Bernie to follow Mrs. Peel. Later, he reported to Arcady, who was about his usual business, looking after his health. He was in the health center, lying face downwards, on a warm marble slab, being given a massage. <laughs> Ah, oh, good, good. Good, Vincent. So you took care of everything at the honey shop. Oh, yes, there was nothing you need worry about there, Mr. Arcadi. Mm. You, you mentioned that you sent Bernie off after the woman who called while you were in the shop. Huh? Yeah, or she was there when we arrived. I, I heard her mention the name George Reed, so I thought she might be dangerous. Mm. You know, someone checking up. Uh, you don't know her name. No, but uh, I thought it best to send Bernie off to her. Uh, perfectly correct procedure, Vincent. Yo, thank you, Mr. Arcady. Bernie knows what to do, I presume. Oh, yes, Mr. Arcady. Ber Bernie knows what to do, all right. Never fear. Bernie followed Mrs. Peel, who made her way back to John Steed's apartment. She'd just got in and was checking the postmark on the package of honey that had been sent to Steed when the doorbell rang. Now, who the devil's that? Steed back? Oh, surely not. Bernie stood in the doorway. He was holding his hat deferentially in front of him. There was a menacing silence. Bernie said, Good day. Uh, may I come in for a minute? 
Mrs. Peel looked at him, sensed something very wrong, and jumped aside just as... Bernie fired through the hat, missed Mrs. Peel by inches. She grabbed the door and swung it back on his hand. Ah! Bernie leapt forward. Mrs. Peel chopped at his gun hand. The gun went off again. Mrs. Peel closed in, fighting for her life. She couldn't make him drop the gun. All she could do was prevent him from turning it upon her. He was strong. Too strong for Mrs. Peel, she changed her tactics, let go of the gun arm, and seized the other one. She gave a terrific throw, and Irish whipped him sideways across the room. He hurtled across a table and crashed into the wall. <laughs> Mrs. Peel hurried over to where Bernie lay on the floor. She turned him over. His eyes gazed up, staring at Cyprus. He still held the gun, crooked back against his chest. There was a small hole in his coat. A red stain seeped across his shirt. He was dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, John Steed sat in the Arabian room of QQF, waiting his turn to be interviewed by Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk. Next to him, a gentleman dressed as Napoleon sat sullen and silent. The curtains parted. Hopkirk fussed his way into the room, ushering a man in mountaineering dress in front of him. Uh, goodbye, Sir Hilary, for another week. Uh, we'll get to the top next week. Uh, meanwhile, I, I think you've done awfully well to ever reach the South Col. Uh, goodbye. Now, now, who's next? Ah, yes, yes, you, sir. Napoleon. Come, everything is ready for you. Wellington is just getting his boots on. <clears throat> it's the far room on the right. Uh, look for the sign saying what to do. Napoleon got up thrust one hand into the front of his coat and marched off without a word. Hopkirk turned to Steed. Now, Mr. Reed, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting, uh, but it's, it's been so busy here today. Four men who wanted to be cowboys, can you imagine? Some people never grow up. <clears throat> we had to stage the gunfight at the old corral in order to satisfy them. Oh, such a production, I assure you. Everyone wanted to be ambushed. Uh, but now, I can give you my undivided attention. Uh, so tell me, uh, what can QQF do for you? Well, firstly, I'd like to know a little more of what it's all about. Oh, you haven't received our literature, our advertising handouts? I'm afraid not. Oh, dear, 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 dear. How very remiss of me. Well, then, the QQF is the Quite Quite Fantastic Incorporated. We help you to satisfy your innermost repressed desires. All of us are dreamers, you know. We indulge in fantasies such as uh, what I would do if I won the Irish sweep, uh, what it would be like to spend an hour or so with Bridget Bardot. Oh, all very healthy. But some people find it hard to get rid of their fantasies in action. They become repressed and subsequently depressed. We, in a nutshell, Mr. Reed, create the fantasies and let you live them, getting rid of all those nasty repressions. Uh, would you like some hind crumpets and a pot of tea? Honey? Or, or jam? Or treacle? Uh, no, thank you. No. Oh, it all began with the Arabian Nights, you know. Uh, what? Uh, the QQF? Yes, yes. As a boy, I was fascinated by the tales of the Arabian Nights. I would dream of living in that exotic era. Uh, then one day I thought, well, why dream? Why not make my dream a reality? I see. After that, it was easy. I created this place. Oh, it was a matter of the right decor, the right atmosphere, oh, plus a few tricks. <laughs> this Aladdin lamp, for instance. Hopkirk picked up the lamp and waved it under Steed's nose. Uh, rubbing it sets up an electronic impulse that rings the bell in the cellar. My little genie then pops up through a trap door in the floor. Oh, just a theatrical trick, but a very effective one, don't you think? Uh, uh, then I started to think of the commercial possibilities, creating other people's dreams and fantasies. And so QQF was born. I see. Uh, within these portals, Mr. Reed, you can stand beside Nelson at Trafalgar, fight with General Custer, become Genghis Khan, a Roman emperor, a world heavyweight champion of the world. A million fantasies can be created with a few simple tricks such as you have already seen. I don't care if it actually happened or not. I'm not taking any more, I tell you. They can march on their stomachs as much as they like. I'm leaving. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Hopkirk. The man who was dressed as Napoleon stomped through the Arabian room, his face blackened, one sleeve of his jacket missing, the sole of one boot split and flapping, and an enormous hole through his hat. Goodbye, Mr. Napoleon. Don't worry. Better luck next time. Now, Mr. Reed. Your own fantasy. Could I suggest an intrepid trapper? 
Or a cavalryman at Balaclava? Oh, Aha. I see you wear a dinner jacket in the daytime. Do I detect a suppressed desire to be a band leader, perhaps? Uh, not really, no. You wish to break the bank at Monte Carlo? Or, ah, got it. You want to be a secret agent. Uh, Steed gave Hopkirk a keen look. Think you're being sent up, Steed? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Ideal for you. Licensed to kill. Pitting your wits against a diabolical mastermind. Uh, make a nice change for your everyday humdrum existence, wouldn't it? Oh, well, absolutely, yes. yes. Certainly, certainly make a change. Uh, but no doubt you have a little fantasy of your own. Uh, what do you find attractive? Well, I quite like that bit about an hour with Brigitte Bardot. Oh, but, um... Well, actually, you know, I, I think I'd like the same as Ronnie Westcott. Eh? Ronald Westcott. Well, he, he is a client of yours, isn't he? Westcott? Uh, Westcott? Ronnie Westcott? Oh, yes, 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 but I hardly think you do. did create a fantasy for him, didn't you? Well, I was working on it, yes, but uh, I wouldn't have thought it was you. Oh, come now, if it was good enough for Ronnie. Well, well, all right. I'll let you know when it's arranged. I can't say how long it will take, but uh, I'll be in touch when it's ready. Fine, fine, thank you so much. I'll be getting along then. Oh, uh, by the way, what is it, the fantasy? I mean, what am I to be? Oh. Chief eunuch in a hurry. Hmm. Bridget Bardo's no good to you now, Steed. Steed went home rather quickly, and who could blame him? He still looked a little stunned as he entered his apartment and made for the liquor cabinet, pouring himself a large drink. It was then that he noticed a pair of legs sticking out from behind the settee. Sighing impatiently, he picked up the phone and put through a call. Hello? Hello, Q Division? Is that Colonel Robertson? Steed here? Yeah, look, Colonel, didn't the body in my flat moved right away, please? Yeah, but it's very untidy, and I don't know what the cleaning woman will think when she... What's that? You already have? No, it's another body entirely. Yes, yes, a different one. Well, Colonel, I have absolutely no control what happens here while I'm out. No, I am not trying to corner the market. I, And furthermore, I... But the line went dead. <sighs> Everything's dead. Except Ponsonby Hopkirk's fantasy. They're far too much alive for my liking. Murder, mayhem, corpses littering the living room. I've got a distinct feeling that this is going to be one of those days. dog gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete and he'll love it. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. And I said, oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water Omo. And sure enough, every bit of grease is out. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.